The London Underground is a very large and very old rapid transit system. Despite this, it only has a handful of rolling stock models in operation. Come with me as we explore the trains of the London Underground and London's other rail transit systems. <laughs> Before we begin, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Also consider supporting me on Patreon, a link is in the description below. This video will cover current and future rolling stock in use on London's rail transit systems. National Rail, Overground, and Elizabeth Line rolling stock may be covered later. Videos on the Underground's historic and departmental stock will be forthcoming. I also want to give a huge shout out to South London Railway Photography for allowing me to use their footage. I'll put a link to their channel in the description below. We'll first take a look at some commonalities between the tube stock. The trains all feature bright white lights with strip maps showing route information. Most trains have LED displays to show destination and next stop info, while all trains have automated announcements. The 1992 stock, 1995 stock, 1996 stock, 2009 stock, and S stock are all equipped for automatic train operation, where the trains drive themselves and the driver controls the doors. The seats in all trains are upholstered with moquettes. The oldest trains on the underground and the oldest passenger trains of revenue service in the UK are the 1972 Mark II stock manufactured by Metro Camel at Washwood Heath between 1972 and 1974. Currently, the trains run on the Bakerloo line but have also run on the Jubilee and Northern lines in the past. They are refurbished between 1991 and 1995 and again between 2016 and 2018. When running on overground tracks in North London, the trains are known as the BR Class 499-2. The trains have a mix of longitudinal down the length of the car and transverse across the width of the car seating, which has become a unique feature among tube trains as longitudinal seating provides more capacity in general. The seats have a brown maquette as well as brown floors to match the color of the Bakerloo line on the tube map. There are 231 cars arranged into seven car sets. Going from south to north, the cars are driving motor, DM, trailer, T, T, DM, where the guard sat before one person operation, uncoupling non-driving motor, UNZM, T and DM. The DMs are numbered 3231 to 3248, 3250 to 3256, 3258 to 3263, 3331 to 3348, 3350 to 3356, 3358 to 3363, 3531 to 3538, and 3540 to 3563, and are 52 feet 9 and a half inches long. The T's are numbered 4231 to 4248, 4250 to 4256, 4258 to 4263, 4331 to 4348, 4350 to 4356, 4358 to 4363, 4531 to 4538, and 4540 to 4563, and are 52 feet 5 inches long. The UNDMs are numbered 3431 to 3438, and 3440 to 3463, and are also 52 feet 5 inches long. The trains are maintained at Stonebridge Park Depot. The second oldest trains on the underground and in the UK are the 1973 stock, manufactured by Metro Camel at Washwood Heath between 1974 and 1977 and entering service on July 19, 1975. The trains were ordered specifically for the Piccadilly line, where they still run today, and replaced the 1938 stock and displaced the 1959 stock. They were refurbished between 1996 and 2001. Similar to most currently in-service tube trains, the cars have longitudinal seating only with a blue maquette to match the Piccadilly line's color. There are 525 cars with all but three remaining in service. They are arranged into 154 three-car DMT-UNDM sets and 21 DMT-DM sets. Two sets are coupled together to form six car trains. DM cars are numbered 100 to 253 and 854 to 897. UNDM cars are numbered 300 to 453, and T cars are numbered 500 to 696. The cars are maintained at Cockfosters Depot and Northfields Depot, and are set to be replaced with 2024 stock soon. Jumping ahead to the 1990s, we come to the 1992 stock, built between 1991 and 1994 by Braille and ABB at Darby Litchurch Lane Works, and entered service on April 7, 1993 on the Central Line, and July 19, 1993 on the Waterloo and City Line. Before the Waterloo and City Line was transferred to London Transport, the cars on that line were known as the BR Class 482. On the Waterloo and City Line, the cars replaced the BR Class 487, and on the Central Line, they replaced the 1962 stock. Forty cars were built for the Waterloo and City Line, arranged to D and non-driving motor NDM pairs, with two pairs forming a train. The remaining 660 cars were built for the Central Line. All cars are married pairs, with some being D NDM and some being NDM NDM. Four sets are coupled together to make eight-car trains. 
The Waterloo and City Line trains were refurbished in 2006, and the Central Line trains were refurbished from 2011 to 2012 and are now undergoing a major midlife overhaul that began in 2019, which will bring many modern features to the trains, such as CCTV and wheelchair spaces. These are the first cars on the underground to have the doors mounted to the outside of the car instead of being flush with it. The interiors of the Waterloo and City Line trains are teal to match the color of the line on the tube map, while the interiors of the Central Line trains pre-midlife overhaul have a blue seat maquette with red stanchions. Post-midlife overhaul, the maquette has been changed to red. Central Line DMs are numbered in the 91,000 series, while Central Line NDMs are numbered in the 92,000 and 93,000 series. Waterloo and City Line DMs are numbered in the 65,000 series, and Waterloo and City NDMs are numbered in the 67,000 series. Each two-car unit on the Waterloo and City Line trains also retain the British Rail unit numbers 482501 to 482510. The Central Line cars are maintained at Hainault Depot, Ryslip Depot, and White City Depot, and the Waterloo and City cars are maintained at Waterloo Depot. A 1995 stock was built by GEC Alstom between 1996 and 2000 in Spain and Washwood Heath and entered service on June 12, 1998. The trains were refurbished between 2013 and 2015. The cars were built to replace the 1959 stock, 1962 stock, and 1972 stock on the Northern Line where they still serve. These are the only deep level tube trains to feature selective door opening, where only some doors are opened at certain stations due to several stations on the line having short platforms. The cars feature a blue maquette and blue stanchions. There are 636 cars arranged into 212 three-car DMT and UNDM sets. Two sets are coupled together to form a six-car train, of which there are 106. The DMs are numbered 51501 to 51686 and 51701 to 51726. The Ts are numbered 52501 to 52686 and 52701 to 52726. And the UNDMs are numbered 53501 to 53686 and 53701 to 53726. The cars are maintained at Golders Green Depot and Warden Depot. The very similar 1996 stock was built by GEC Alstom, later Alstom, between 1996 and 1998 with the second batch being built in 2005 in Barcelona, Spain and Washwood Heath and entered service on December 24, 1997. They are built for the Jubilee Line extension into the Docklands in Stratford and replaced the 1983 stock on that line. The extra batch of cars built in 2005 allowed the trains to be extended from six cars to seven cars and also provided four brand new trains. The trains are refurbished between 2017 and 2019. There are 63 four-car DT special trailer ST, the new cars, UNDM sets, and 63 three-car UNDM TDM sets for a total of 441 cars. One four-car set and one three-car set are coupled together to form a seven-car train. The seats have a blue maquette and silver stanchions. Unlike the 1995 stock, the 1996 stock trains are rushed into their production, which is a short way of explaining why the trains make the weird noise that they do. The DMs are numbered 96001 to 96126, the Ts are numbered 96201 to 96278, 96279 to 96319 odds, 96320 to 96326, and 96880 to 96918 evens. The UNDMs are numbered 96401 to 96526. The trains are maintained at Stratford Market Depot. The 2009 stock was built by Bombardier at Darby Litchurch Lane Works as part of the Movia family from 2007 to 2011 and entered service on July 21, 2009. They replaced the 1967 stock on the Victoria Line. The cars are built slightly wider than other deep level tube trains owing to the Victoria Line's slightly larger loading gauge. This means the cars are unable to run on other tube lines, with track connections between the Victoria Line and other lines being used for departmental trains only. The interiors have brighter lights than previous tube trains with a blue maquette and blue stanchions as well as two accessible cars, the center cars, per train. 276 cars were built arranged in 94 four-car DM, T, NDM, UNDM sets. Two sets are coupled together to form 47 eight-car trains, the longest seat bubble trains. The DMs are numbered 11001 to 11094, the Ts are numbered 12001 to 12094, the NDMs are numbered 13001 to 13094, and the UNDMs are numbered 14001 to 14094. The trains are maintained at Northumberland Park Depot. The S stock is split into two subclasses, the S7 and S8. The trains were built by Bombardier as part of their Movia family between 2008 and 2017 at Darby Litchurch Lane Works. The S8 stock entered service on July 31, 2010, and the S7 stock entered service on July 6, 2012. 
The S8 stock replaced the A60 and A62 stock in the Metropolitan line, and the S7 stock replaced the C69, C77, and D78 stock on the District, Circle, and Hammersmith and City lines. These are the first cars on the system to have air conditioning and open gangways. The S7 stock has all longitudinal seating, while the S8 stock has mostly longitudinal seating with some being transverse, a trait shared only with the 1972 Mark II stock. The trains have a multicolored marquette and yellow stanchions. Similar to the 1995 stock, these trains have selective door opening due to short platforms at some stations. The S7 stock cars are formed into 133 seven-car trains with a DM, NTM, MS, MS, NDM, DNDM, DM arrangement, and the S8 stock are formed into 59 eight-car trains with a DM, NDM, NDM, MS, MS, NDM, NDM, DM arrangement. S7 DMs are number 21301 to 21568. NDMs are number 22301 to 22568. 25302 to 25386 evens, and 23388 to 23568 evens, and the MSs are numbered 24301 to 24568. S8 DMs are numbered 21001 to 21116. NDMs are numbered 22001 to 22116, 23001 to 23055 odds, 25002 to 25056 evens, and 23057 to 23116. And MSs are numbered 24001 to 24116. The trains are maintained at Neeson Depot, Upminster Depot, and Ealing Common Depot. The 2024 stock, otherwise known as the new tube for London, are currently under construction and delivery. Construction began in 2022 and are scheduled to enter service in 2025. The trains are being built by Siemens as part of their Inspira family at Gould, England, and Vienna, Austria. The trains were replaced the 1973 stock on the Piccadilly line. 846 cars have been ordered, arranged into 94 nine-car articulated train sets, arranged as DM, T, 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 NDM, T, 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 DM. There are options to order up to 250 more trains to replace the 1972 Mark II and 1992 stock, but the funding to exercise these options is not available. These will be the first deep-level trains to feature air conditioning and open gangways, and will feature modern LED passenger information screens. We'll now move on to the Docklands Light Railway, or DLR, which has four generations of rolling stock. The first generation was the P86 and P89. These cars were based on the Stadtbahn wagon Type B cars used in Germany on Stadtbahn systems, which are light railways that feature high floor vehicles and a mix of grade separated and on street running. The 11 cars of the P86 stock were built by Linke Hoffmann Busch in Germany in 1986 and carried the numbers 01 to 11 and entered service with the opening of the system on August 31st, 1987. Like all the cars on the first three generations, each unit is a two segment articulated car. These cars originally had inward folding doors similar to older trams and older trains on the Chicago L. The cars featured mostly transverse seating, including the holy grail of seats at the front of the train. The 10 cars of the P89 stock were built as a supplemental order by Brel from 1989 to 1990 and were almost identical to the P86 stock. They carried the numbers 12 to 21. Both car types were later modified with sliding doors to replace the folding doors. In 1995, all P86 and P89 cars were transferred to the Essen Stadtbahn, where they were modified to run with manual operation and overhead lines. I know the P86 and P89 stock were retired, and this video is about in currently in-service trains. However, I didn't want to make a video that was just about one model of rolling stock for the DLR, so it made more sense to put these cars in this video. The second generation of rolling stock on the DLR consists of the B90, B92, and B2K stock, all built by Mabardier and Bruges Brugum. There are 23 B90 cars, numbered 22 to 44, 47 B92 cars, numbered 45 to 91, and 24 B2K cars, numbered 01 to 16 and 92 to 99. The B90 cars were built and entered service in 1991, the B92 cars were built from 1993 to 1995 and entered service in 1993, and the B2K cars were built from 2001 to 2002 and entered service in 2001. The cars were refurbished between 2004 and 2007 with new interior layouts and automated announcements. Two B90 cars, one B92 car, and one B2K car have been scrapped with the rest of the cars remaining in service. The third generation of DLR trains is the B07 stock, built by Bombardier. There are 55 cars, numbered 101 to 155, split into two batches. The cars entered service in September 2008 and feature a new interior layout. These were the first cars on the DLR to operate in three car formations. All DLR cars are maintained at Poplar Depot and Beckton Depot. The B23 stock was built by CAF in Spain and their entry into service has been delayed due to technical issues. There are 270 cars on order arranged into 54 five-car train sets that are more metro-like instead of the Stadtbahn-like older cars. Each five-car train will be the same length as a three-car train of older cars. The trains carry a new livery featuring the DLR's color on the tube map and have a new interior with mostly longitudinal seating, with the exception of the Holy Grail seats at the end of each train. 
The London Trams has two models of tram in operation. The older of the two is the CR4000, built by Bombardier as part of their Flexity Swift family between 1998 and 2000 in Vienna, Austria, and entered service at the opening of the system on May 10, 2000. They are numbered 2530 to 2553, which is a continuation of the tram numbering scheme in place on the legacy tram network. Each tram is a two-segment articulated unit with a very small third segment in the middle. This doesn't really count. They were refurbished between 2008 and 2009, and again between 2015 and 2016. The trams have a green seat maquette and green stanchions to match the color of the trams on the tube map. One tram in the class has been scrapped. Tram 2535 was named Stephen Parascandolo in 1980 to 2007 in honor of the person of the same name that was a huge tram enthusiast and died in a car crash. The newer model of tram in service on the tram link is the Variobahn built by Stadler in 2011 and 2012. These trams are five segment units which entered service on March 30, 2012 to supplement the CR4000s. Six trams were in the first batch and a second batch of six more was ordered later and manufactured from 2013 to 2015, bringing the total number of Vario bonds to 12. The trams have similar interiors to the CR4000s and are numbered 2554 to 2565. The Automated People Mover, APM, at Heathrow Airport's Terminal 5, Heathrow Terminal 5 Transit, uses a fleet of 10 Inovia APM 200 vehicles manufactured by Bombardier, which were built from the mid-2000s to the early 2010s. They entered service with the opening of the line in 2008. The Heathrow Terminal 5 PRT is a personal rapid transit system that links Terminal 5 with its car parks. It uses 21 Ultra vehicles manufactured by Ultra Global PRT. Each vehicle is small and only, can only handle a handful of people, hence the personal rapid transit name. The vehicles entered service with the system's opening in May 2011. The APM at Gatwick Airport, the Gatwick Airport Shuttle Transit, is used to transport people between the two terminals and from the railway station to the North Terminal. The line uses a fleet of six Inovia APM 100, formerly known as the CX100, vehicles manufactured by Bombardier, and entered service with the reopening of the line on July 1, 2010. Prior to this, the line used a fleet of C-100 vehicles manufactured by Adtrans, which entered service with the line in 1987 and were retired in September 2009, at which the point the system went down for refurbishment. The APM at Stansted Airport, the Stansted Airport Track Transit System, uses five C-100 vehicles and four CX-100 vehicles, both manufactured by all Adtrans. The C-100 entered service in 1991 and the CX-100s entered service in 1998. Both models of cars are scheduled to be decommissioned in 2026 when the entire system will be permanently closed. The last APM in London is the Luton Dart, short for Direct Air Rail Transit, which links the Luton Airport Parkway station served by Thameslink and East Midlands Railway services with Luton Airport itself. The system uses two cable liner train sets manufactured by Doppelmeyer Cable Car. The name is a giveaway that the line is cable hauled. Unlike some DCC cable liner systems, like the Oakland Airport Connector in the San Francisco Bay Area, each train set runs on its own dedicated track, shuttling back and forth. The trains entered service at the line's opening on March 10, 2023. With that, we've gone through every current and future with a few past model of rolling stock used on London's rail transit systems. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Videos about the historic and departmental stock of the underground will be coming out in the coming months, so be sure to be on the lookout for those. Also consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can get early access to videos and bonus footage compilations of things that didn't make it into full-length videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.